What comes to mind when you think about climate change? Polar bears, perhaps? Melting ice caps? But do these images make climate change feel relevant to your life? Do they motivate you to take action? Research indicates that they do not, as you will hear from Adam Corner, who leads the Climate Visuals Program at Climate Outreach, and myself, Liz Bonsa. I'm a visual storytelling specialist from Resource Media. We are going to discuss how to create a better visual story about climate change. Whether you're using photos or video to communicate climate change, we've narrowed down our research to 10 principles for using imagery that will captivate people and inspire them to take action. Strong climate visuals are about reflecting people's genuine experiences. Some of the images we'll be sharing are emotionally powerful. They are pictures of real people dealing with the impacts of climate change. These images capture people's lived experiences and we believe they should be treated with the utmost respect. Ultimately, images should empower the individuals photographed in a way that promotes their dignity and agency rather than diminishes it. Well, Adam, since we have worked together over the past few years, I've gotten to know climate visuals and your testing of people's reactions to one photo over another. And over time, I've realized that Resource Media keeps coming up with similar findings and recommendations for climate visual storytelling. Yeah, agreed. So in this film, we'll be condensing your video research and our photo principles down to 10 fundamentals that everyone should remember, whether you're using images or video to communicate climate change. Should we dive in? Great, let's do it. I'll start with a video on climate, ocean acidification, and the crabbing industry I helped produce with Ben Drummond and Sarah Joy Steele for Ocean Conservancy. The first thing we knew we needed to do was create something that people would want to watch till the end. This sounds easy, but it's not. Which brings us to our first principle. You have to hook your audience from the get-go. We know people drop off videos within the first 20 seconds if we have not successfully grabbed their attention right away. So here in this video, we decided to start with a dramatic close-up of the crab, the claw, then their eye popping up and paired it with dramatic music. Although this isn't a tutorial about crabs, right? And our research shows it's all about showing people and sharing relatable human stories. I totally agree. The next thing to consider as you develop your story is to make sure the main character is credible and relatable to your audience. This is important because you want your audience to root for this person and they should want to listen to what the character has to say. Stories about people whose livelihoods are under threat are immensely powerful. Everyone can relate to how they must feel. That makes total sense. So when we're talking about photos, and I'm sure this is the case for videos too, it's really important to show real people and not just real, but unstaged images of these people. Yes, image testing shows that people prefer authentic images and our brain subconsciously knows the difference between those and stock photos. Literally, our eyes linger longer on candid images. Exactly, and staged photos come across as gimmicky and inauthentic, so showing real people also reduces the spread of stereotypes or generalizations. This also relates to our next principle, and that is to curate climate change visuals that are emotionally powerful and empowering for your audience. The images that you show should evoke an emotion, and this could be something negative like anger or fear, because there's no point in downplaying how serious climate change is, and at least in some circumstances, emotions can lead to action, but you don't want your audience to feel overwhelmed or disempowered. So if you're going to show powerful imagery of climate impacts, then maybe also signpost some more positive solutions. It's about striking a balance, so you don't leave your audience feeling fatalistic about the whole situation. Same thing goes for videos. In this video on the research around the benefits of carbon that is captured and stored by wetlands, also known as blue carbon, we hear from different people conducting research in the lab and in an estuary. And for scientific research, the emotional note we hit is the simple joy of discovery, which everyone can relate to, and making connections as various people learn more. Climate change is serious, it's scary, but as communicators, we know we need to leave the viewer still feeling empowered and hopeful by the end of the film. Climate threats, I always say, need to be paired with solutions for people to avoid feeling overwhelmed or or paralyzed by the problem. 
Absolutely. And it's also important to tell new stories, which is our fifth principle. So for most people, when they think about climate change, it's images of polar bears or melting ice caps that are going to pop into their minds. But these are old associations and they're tired and they make climate change feel geographically distant from people's lives. So if you're working with photographers, encourage them to take new types of climate images beyond sad polar bears and ice caps turning into puddles. Because from people's health to the way we eat, travel or power our homes, there's literally dozens of untold stories to capture. Adam, you mentioned something earlier that leads into our sixth principle. For both videos and photos, surprise, humor and authenticity are key to going viral. Even if your goal is not to go viral, to capture anyone's attention in the age of information overload, you have to show something really unique, unexpected, or delightful. And there is good news for organizations who have limited budgets for videos. Low production value does not matter if any of those qualities are present. You can just look at what goes viral on YouTube. An element of surprise is the most common variable for videos that are a hit and get shared a lot. Okay, so moving back to what the content should include, it's really important to show local impacts of climate change, but also convey the scale of the problem. And that's right through from the causes of climate change through to possible solutions. And that applies to photos and video. So we have to be operating at both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. It's finding that balance that's key. So it's important to show how climate change impacts individuals in their particular communities and where they live, but it's also important to portray how individual factors add up on a societal scale. So, for example, a documentary with interviews with farm workers in Southern California, say, suffering from chronic respiratory illnesses is going to be more compelling than talking in general about how wildfires cause air pollution. So it's making it specific, but at scale, that's the key. And that also ends up being a much more compelling, emotionally engaging narrative. Yeah, so here's another example. Showing an aerial photo of a congested highway with thick smog in the air communicates the negative environmental impact of driving and no one has any love for being stuck in a queue of traffic. Whereas showing a single family using their car is probably going to make people feel unfairly penalised. Why us? That makes sense to me. The eighth principle is to use visuals that evoke the universally held values of your audience. And this also applies to both photos and videos. Universally held values are the worldviews, their aspirations, life guiding principles that most, if not all members in your target audience hold. That can be valuing family, health, safety, prosperity, food security. It means also that you have to do some preliminary research who is your audience? What are their core concerns? What kinds of visual narratives inspire them or deflate them? And related to that, we would recommend minimizing your use of protest imagery if it shows the usual suspects, what people would perceive as typical environmentalists. We found that people are more responsive to seeing people who are directly impacted by climate change or essentially a more diverse crowd on the demo. So here's our ninth principle, include a healthy amount of tension. This is especially applicable to creating videos. It is indeed. So think about your favorite stories from books, from films, from TV, drama, conflict, suspense. That is what keeps you watching until the very end. So if you choose to put your main call to action, your message at the end of your video, it is critical that your viewer watches until the video ends to hear that message, take action on this legislation, donate to this project, whatever it might be. Right, which leads us straight on to our final principle, which is to be clear about the message and call to action. So we've spent time talking about creating a compelling story about climate change, and this is wonderful, but if your audience doesn't understand your message or heed the call to action at the end, then nothing is really accomplished. So be specific with your ask and share a link to resources where people can go to learn more. And repeat that same message over and over again across all of your communication channels to really reinforce it. Yes, agreed. So that is it, and thank you for watching. 